Hi, my name is Michael Gilmore, and I'm the writer of Whizbang's blog and also the co-founder of Parklogic.com. And it's so good to have you here with me today. I'd like to start today's Saturday Musings off with a little bit of a story. Um, I was at NamesCon 2020 in Austin, Texas. So it was a late hours of the evening. <laughs> And we're, a bunch of us are sitting in the bar, and one of the, the people we're sitting at this table with asked me a question which just caught me by surprise. And the question was this. It was, Michael, you've been married a long time. And I said, yeah, I have been married 32 years. So how did you manage to, uh, to stay with that same person all those years? And I, I was really surprised by that, and it caused me to really reflect about my own marriage and how it is to that Rosa and I have managed to stay together all this time. And, and as I reflected, they said, well, you must just mar marry the right person. And I said, well, I definitely married the right person. She's great. I like, uh, she's fabulous. Um, but then I thought about it a bit more. And I said, yeah, but the, the early years of our marriage weren't like all singing and dancing and all, all that wonderful. Uh, there was tough times in, in those early years. Those first few years, you're trying to get to know each other a bit more and things like that, and it was tough. Um, you'd have arguments, you had to work out how are you going to go along and deal with those arguments, all those sort of things. And uh, the person said, well, how did you manage to stay together for 32 years so far? And I said, well, I think the first thing was the fact that we we're married caused me to say, I need to solve this problem if there's a, 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 in, almost like an intractable uh, conflict uh, so with an argument over an issue or something like that, then uh, we need to solve it because we are married. And uh, they didn't seem to like that, that answer, the people around the table. And I said, well, yeah, it's so true. Like so many people have this escape parachute or something like that. I was talking to a, a person the other day and they said, um, do you keep your bank accounts uh, together separate or do you keep them all together in, in one account? And I said, well, of course we put them all in one account. And I said, that's just what we've always done. I thought that was what everyone did, in fact. And they said, no, no, we, we keep them separate. And I said, well, why? I said, well, then we, have to, we work out who should pay for what and that sort of thing. And I said, but hang on, that's almost like you're preparing for the failure of your marriage before you, you, before you actually go into the marriage. And I said, we put everything in. This is, there's some things I find in my own life where you're either all in or you're not. Like that's a term out of, out of poker, Texas Holden. But uh, with marriage, it was, I was all in. This is a person I was committing myself to for better, for worse, for rich, for poor, in sickness and in health. And it was, uh, some people said, well, that must, that must have been so tough. And I go, well, not really, because um, yeah, I started off so madly in love with this, this, this wonderful, wonderful lady. And uh, one of the things I discovered across the last 32 years is that I thought my, my love was so deep when we were first married. What I didn't realize, there was a depth to love, it just seems to grow over time. And it's just amazing. It really is amazing. Um, you keep on thinking you've, you've made the next level of love for this person. And you suddenly realize a few years later, oh my gosh, there is just so much more love in this world that you can give. Yeah, so it's still, the people around the table really was like, oh, okay, okay. So um, you had to work out to, to solve the problems. And I said, yes, I had to solve the problems. Say, so what else? I said, well, let me tell you another story. And, and they said, okay, well, they're, they're listening to me. And I said to them, well, I remember many years ago, we were just being married for, for a few years and um, we went out to get a video from the video store. So I went out and I bought some, um, some chips and things like that. We're gonna have a good night at home. And uh, we were sitting down and I poured the chips out of the bowl. And, and Rosa looked at me and said, you know, I don't like salt and vinegar chips. I like plain chips. And I thought to myself, well, no, I didn't. I, I didn't know that. Um, and I kicked myself. And so it, it, there was like a blinding flash went off in my head. And I thought, oh, my goodness, there's so many things about this amazing 
woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with that I just don't know, down to really basic things like, I don't even know what flavor chip she likes, to obviously there's some other issues as well along the way that I need to go along and, and really get to know her. So I made it my mission in life to learn everything I could about my wife. And that was, that was pretty cool to be able to do that, to learn everything I could about her and down to those silly little things. And people say they're silly. I said, well, they're not actually silly at all. They're really, really important. Um, and because they're important for that person. And out of all the people in the world where I, 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 I care about, I care about her the most. Therefore, is it silly to learn about her? So in that process, I also made another decision. And that was, I want to become her servant. You may say, well, what, hang on, hang on, hang on. You want to become her servant? I said, yeah, yeah, I want to become her servant. I, I want to become her servant and uh, to, to learn more and more things about her and also then to serve her in, in whatever capacity I could. And the people around the table were like a bit, bit stunned by this, said, well, hang on a second here. Um, uh, you're, you're going to do all these things for her all the time? And I said, well, yeah, I'm going to become her servant. I'm going to find out what she really likes, and I'm going to do it for her. I'm going to do whatever it is, whether it is putting the rubbish bins out, whether it is um, making sure the dishes are completely clean, the kitchen clean, or the bed is done, whatever silly little things up to the really big things in life, I'm going to do them. Uh, I'm going to do them for her. And... Uh, they, and one of the things I discovered around the table was the people there confused servanthood with slave. No, I wasn't slave. Slave is when someone else demands things of you. Being a servant is when you willingly do something. And so I explained the difference between a slave and a, a servant. And they then said, well, what happens if if she didn't respond, and what happens if she decides, fantastic, I've got a servant. And I said, well, that's the risk of love. That's just the risk I'm going to run. But I've got to believe that this person that I love and cherish, and I want to go and serve her, I've got to believe there's going to be a reciprocation of that. And what I discovered was, amazingly, there was a reciprocation. My wonderful wife went along reciprocated to me. See, so many people, I, I, uh, they go along and they want their needs met. They want to go along and have their needs met in this relationship. Because I'm not getting my needs met, then I'm going to go along and bail out on it. And my reaction was, I'm not going to focus on my needs. I'm going to focus on her needs. I'm going to go look at her and I'm going to go along and do whatever I can for her. And you know what amazingly happens is, at the more I focused on my wonderful wife, the more she focused on me. And my needs just magically got met as I met her needs. And it becomes this whole giving thing and giving backwards and forwards. It's almost like you're trying to outgive each other in displays of affection and love. And that's one of the ways we sort of built our marriage as we, we went along through year after year after year. Now we've done 33, we're coming up to 30, sorry, 32, and now we're coming up to 33 this year. Um, some other things I, I, I end up doing as well is, uh, and this is speaking to all the guys out there, don't solve problems. Stop trying to solve the problem. Just listen. Just listen. And uh, I remember for uh, probably the first, I don't know, 20 years of our, our, our married life, I never drank tea and coffee. I didn't drink any tea and coffee at all. I just didn't like it, couldn't be bothered making it and all that sort of stuff. And then finally, uh, my, my wife explained to me that, uh, that having a tea or coffee or something like that is not about the action of drinking a beverage. It's about spending time while the other person may talk and share an experience or something they're struggling with. And so in the end, uh, we we both uh, we spend some time each day having a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. And it's really, they're, they're very special times. 
And we spend quite a bit of that time. In fact, we play Candy Crush together. And I think we're up to level 2,700 or something like that. Something crazy like that. Um, but we do something together. And it gives the opportunity for the other person to, to offload some stresses that may be happening um, in their life. Or, or I can offload my stress to, say, say Rosalind and, and vice versa. And that became a really important thing for us um, uh, as we spent that quality time together drinking a beverage. And, uh, it, and I must admit, I look forward to those times each day. I really do, of having that quality time. And we know that it's going to be there and that, that particular time. And when we happen to miss it, because I could be away or something like that from traveling, uh, that's one of the things we love to do when I first get back is sit down and have a cup of tea together. Such simple things in life, um, really simple things. The other thing uh, we, we found through the years is there's some things which really rub Rosen up the wrong way and there's some things will rub me up the wrong way. Be very aware of those, you know, and you don't have to win every argument or every discussion. To give you an idea where we're at now in our relationship after all this time, I can't remember the last time we had an argument. I really can't. And, uh, and like I'm talking about a serious argument. I, I just can't remember the last time. And I don't know whether that's because I just purposely forget or whether we just don't have them anymore. But we just don't seem to have them anymore. So it's becoming a servant. It's really learning about the other person. It's, it's putting them before you. It's putting their needs before your needs. It's learning to love in the true sense of what love is all about, of unconditional love, of sacrificial love, of, of just all-embracing love for whatever it is that person is. They're the most special person that works for you, your partner in life. Stay together. I would encourage you to do so because one of the things you'll discover is if you get through those really tough times, if you get through those tough times, then on the other side, there's a depth of love you haven't experienced yet. I can only go on my own experiences. You know, sadly, there are some uh, marriages or some partners, they end up going their separate ways and things like that. And uh, But, you know, the next person you meet, take a different view of them and say, how can I be a servant for them? Because I want this to be one that takes me into my 90s, even to 100 uh, years old. And I want to have them experience life with me. I want to experience life with them the whole way through. Anyway, there's a few thoughts on marriage and there's quite a bit I could talk about on that topic. Maybe next week or in the following weeks in my future Saturday musings. But can I just say, it's been great to having you here. Please like this video or leave a comment and, and things like that. I'm trying to really open up my life to you and I love hearing about your life and your experiences as well. Anyway, see you later and have a great weekend. Bye. <music>